just giving our honor and praise to the Most High, our power. For I thank you, Father, for waking me up. And I thank you, Father, for giving me the strength to think upon you. I also thank you, Father, for your son, Yeshia, or who we call today Jesus Christ, who have shed his precious blood and has given us the gift of life. I also thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, the Mother, who leads us and guides us and comforts us. And I also thank you, Father, for your angels and the assembly of the angels that you have directed to help man for his task and mission for delivering the truth, the word of Christ. Greetings, Israelites and Gentiles. I come before you today taking a walk Thinking on things that are from above, those things that are good, which is love, peace, joy, respect. These things that sometimes we take for granted, but these qualities are the qualities of life. They give life to the individual who is unloving, who is filled with anger, hate, resentment. I'm coming out of the book of remembrance of our ancient grandmothers. The seven qualities of the spirit. We must possess these qualities. Why? It's because we know in the Lord's prayer, he said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are to bring the will of the Father in our life here in this temporal world. One might ask why? Why is because evil is running rampant. But if one can take the time to seek the most high in the morning and to do their due diligence of seeking him, you will find that he is with you. He is near. He will never leave you. Nevertheless, we will go into these seven qualities, but um, let's take a seat on this bench here. And uh, we'll talk. And you all can just look around, enjoy some of this peace on this walk. And um, if you have your book of remembrance, we will start at page 244. And we will, we will go through these qualities to see if these qualities exist in you and what qualities that you know you don't possess but you would like to possess and I'm here to tell you if you believe in Christ you will possess these qualities and you will see that these qualities that you possess aid you through your life they keep you from suffering they keep the hindrance of you from seeking the most high. For we know there's a lot of devices that keep us from the most high. A lot of amusement that keep us from the most high. It's kind of simple when you have a relationship with the most high. You may see me stop every now and then if I might see something, it might be a snake, it might be a deer. There's no telling what you may find back here. Nevertheless, um, Having a relationship with the Most High is, is pretty simple. And I think 
the Holy Spirit for ministering to me this morning. And I thank the Holy Spirit for ministering to me throughout the whole day because it is needed in this time that we are living in. And um, the quality that one must have in the beginning of inception of your birth, the quality that you inherited as a child, as a baby, was that the Most High was with you and angels was with you. And if you had loved ones to die and cross over and they went through those seven ways or seven ways and it's been established and they wanted to help you in your walk to make it and cross over to the other side if it is God's will I'm here to tell you my friend you are correct if you've seen the loved one and they are aiding you and trying to speak to you and in love and peace listen to the voice of the spirit know and discern what is evil and what is good and when having this relationship with Christ as I get back to that you will find that it is a simple relationship it's no different from what you would see today in the natural if you had a relationship with another you know it's kind of one of those things where you want to be with your friend you always want to discuss things go over things spend time with one another but if the other friend doesn't want to spend time you kind of hold back or if you wanted to be with that friend and that friend sees that you're busy and that you are not paying attention to that friend when it's time to then that friend for the love and sake and respect for the friend that is not paying attention you fall back well that's how Christ is when you are falling back or spending time with something else other than Christ Christ simply falls back out of the respect of you and what you have going on in your life. Now, isn't that a beautiful thing, you know? That the Most High is not aggressive, or shall I say, the Spirit of Christ is not aggressive. The Spirit of Christ is meekness, humility, gentleness, love, peace. But however, I like to get back to my quiet time, but I was moved by the Spirit and by the Kingdom to come to you in regards to the seven qualities you must possess to cross over. The first of the seven is you must learn to spend most of your waking hours thinking, feeling, or speaking to God and Christ. Now how many times have we went to sleep with ill thoughts? Whether it might have been you lost a job the day of, or you got in a disagreement with your spouse, or you and your parents are at it. But nevertheless, you went to sleep with that and you didn't repent or sought out for forgiveness. So when you wake up the next day, that's still on your mind. Well, let me help you. We need not to do that. We need not to do that. We need to have Christ on our mind and God on our mind in the first part of our day. It is important because we don't know what we may face for that day. And to have that relationship and confidence in God and in Christ early in the day, whatever you go through, it makes things so much easier because you know He has 
your best interest in heart and mind. The second of the seven is you must develop a deep and profound humility in approaching him. And this humility is not self-abasing, but happy and confident exchange between friends. So see, this, this second way is a deep, profound humility in approaching him, accept, accepting him for who he is and what he has done for you and how he's thought about you before you even thought about yourself. See, it is important that when you are in a relationship, just as you are in the natural, someone you love and you cherish dearly, as you wake up there and you're there, the first thought or the first name or the first person in your mind. And the second way is that you have developed an ability to, once you have them in your heart and your mind, you automatically know how to approach them in a way of respect, in a way of humility. For an example, good morning, so-and-so, how are you? And so forth. Now, let's go to the third. The third of the seven is you must clearly distinguish between your formal approach, good approach to Christ, and your casual one. Now this one is a very interesting one because some of us think casually of Christ. A good example would be when we were in theology school, the question arise was, can one simply believe in Christ and die and not do any work but just believing in Christ will they enter into habitations of heaven and that was a good question however where I'm at in my life it's a very easy question to answer no for if I came to you and I knew your name and I presented myself and you didn't know your name but I knew everything about you but I never called upon you I never asked for your help I never took the time to establish any type of relationship with you a good one meaning a formal one but rather it was casual a uh, hey and a uh, bye and oh hey I know you hey and oh yeah, I, I, I seen them before, bye. That's casual. Do you think you can enter into your neighbor's house if you just casually know them? So the answer to that question, do you think someone who just calls or believes in the name of Christ casually and die and think they will cross over into that habitation? Well, I will answer it for you. The answer is no. You must distinguish casual and you must distinguish formal approaches to Christ. Getting to know Him. You see, that will take you right back to step one, to the first quality. Seeking Him, praising Him, honoring Him. Those things are important, brothers and sisters. Now we'll go to the fourth one. The fourth of the seven, you must be able to act with him on all levels for any reason without any image of yourself in your own mind's eye and not be self-conscious. This is a good one. And I shall read a little further in this and then we'll expound. And this is because of self-awareness before him tends to be associated with self-glory and seeking to be lifted up before your fellows. And when your attention is on yourself, you will only hear your own answers. And selflessness is true innocence as you stand before him. And you must think of him only and keep yourself out of your thoughts entirely. And you must look to him for his expressions, not your own, 
are those that will prove your position to someone else. And you will find by keeping yourself out of your inquiries with him that when you approach him, you will not limit him to your own expectations. This is a simple one, but it was rather hard for me growing in the spirit because it's natural for us to seek out our own will. That is a natural tendency being in the flesh. But however, when you are in the spirit, you think collectively. Everything you do is not for you, but it's for someone else. Simple. When you do your deeds amongst your brethren, or if you're ministering amongst your brethren, you take yourself out of the picture. Case in point, there's no need for me to say, oh, guess what I did this morning? Oh, guess what I did last night? Oh, you know what God is doing for me? Oh, God, God, me, 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 I, 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 I. No, 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 my friend. That's not how it goes. You see, it's simple. When I come before the Lord, or when someone is coming before the Lord, it's rather easy to just thank the Most High for what He's done for you and what He's doing for you and the future things that He will do for you. For again, who has your best interest in mind? Yourself or Christ? I would say the latter. Christ has your best interest in mind. Because sometimes we can ask for things that he'll give us, but we do not have the wisdom to keep them, nor the knowledge to know about them. So therefore, you asked in the miss. Now we shall go to the fifth of the seven. The fifth of the seven is you must view Christ as one who has shared emotions with you in all things, holy in your humility. No different from how we would, or how one could implement Christ in all that he or she does. For example, oh man, you see that girl? Boy, that girl is bad, boy, you see that body? Hey man, the Most High says watch out for a shapely woman. You see that? You see how you can implement those things to thwart off the forces of the enemy? You can do those things easily, real easily. But however, you must be able to act with him on all levels for any reason without any image of yourself in your own mind's eye and not be self-conscious. Why? And this is because self-awareness before him tends to be associated with self-glory. And we all know when we were in the world, Girl, wait till you see my husband, girl. He look good. Man, you should have saw that girl I bagged last night. Right? Oh, or am I just um, talking to holy people right now? We all been there, folks. And we must repent. And God is very just to forgive us. All right? Because we know that when we come to God, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And who is that truth? Christ. The fifth of the seven. And the fifth of the seven is you must view Christ as one who has shared emotions with you in all things holy in your humanity. You know, the fifth is almost similar to the fourth. But let's go and expound on that. Why? While he is very aware of when you feel vindictive, greedy, lustful, or prideful, he will not share those emotions with you, but he will only feel anxious with you while they are being felt. But he will feel with you when you are sad or happy, afraid or confident, worried or consoled, tired or energetic, and enthusiastic or hesitant. In all things, you are not alone, and he feels your wholesome emotions with you. So when you fight those desires, and those desires you're trying to expel out of you, he feels those. 
See, Christ became, see, the spirit of Christ became man. So that when we come to him, he understands. He knows. He went through those same feelings as a man as we did. But he overcame them, you all. And we can too. And guess what? If you're listening, you're going to overcome those evil desires, those evil feelings, those evil emotions. We will overcome. The six of the seven. We're going to get up and walk. Let's take a walk because we're almost in the last one. The six of the seven. You must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of reproval enough to look for wherever it can be found. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you're married. <laughs> and you men know that those who are married... You know, you find that your wife is pretty intelligent. And she can feel things that you can't feel. And she can see things that you can't see. Case in point, that don't belong. And when she brings those things out, or if the Holy Spirit brings those things out, or if a brother points those things out, repent. It's simple. It's so simple. See, these things, you can tell a child what they've done wrong. And you can tell them, now go and apologize. And guess what? They will listen, put their head down in humility. And then they'll look up and say, I apologize. I'm sorry. That's how we have to be as a child, right, y'all? Let's be as a child. It's a beautiful thing to be as a child it is for you know when you have a childlike mind you have a childlike heart and when you have a childlike mind and a childlike heart you have a childlike spirit and when you have those things you are full of energy full of love full of humility full of peace you are just full all right look at those beautiful fish Ooh wee those things are big in there, and they're beautiful, too. I know. Hey, y'all. I know. Look at y'all. Y'all Y'all want to be fed, but I can't feed you. Nope, I can't feed you. Look, they're coming in. I cannot feed you. I know y'all want to be fed, but I cannot feed you. You guys got to find your way. Because, see, look, every time I come and try to feed you or give you something, you're going to expect me to give you. But you got to learn to go out there and get it on your own. I know. All right. Now, uh, the seventh of the seven, last but not the least. And the seventh of the seven is each one must address in some fashion the four stations of purifications of Eden while they are in the temporal world. You can experience those things here in this life. If I told you that you could cross over in this life, within those four stations, there's actually seven stations, but according to Brother Ezra's, there's seven ways, but nevertheless, we can experience those four ways here. How? Well, by accepting Christ and knowing the person of Christ and knowing who he is. Knowing that he had a great love for you. That he died for you. And when you receive him. You go and get baptized. And when you come up out of that water. You are a new man. Washed clean by the living water. But let me tell you something people. Whether you believe it or not. The living water is in you. Your body is made up of 90% water. Now, I would like to ask you, where did that water come from? Nevertheless, when you're born again, then you become, you renew your mind. You become who Christ wants you to become. 
and you start to find that your prayer life has to add up to what's in your life. You find that you have to pray more. You have to seek Him more. You have to find your secret place. And when you find that secret place, you are in His shadow. And in His shadow exists the kingdom. And in the kingdom, there are angels and beings that will minister unto you. Heavenly beings. Heavenly angels that will minister to you. As they did the other brothers and sisters in Christ. So I leave with you, brothers and sisters, as I take my walk and speak to the Most High, speak to Christ, speak to the Holy Spirit, speak to my angels, and speak to my ancestors that are living in heaven and rooting for me and others who are born again seeking Christ. So I just want to tell you, and Brother Kyle just wants to tell you, go get this book. And remember the seven qualities that you must have, that you must work on day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour, week by week, month by month. Continue to seek the Most High. Blessings. Love y'all. And have a wonderful and great, peaceful day.